The Volkswagen Tiguan not only gets a facelift, it also gets for the first time the new Tiguan R. 320 horsepower, all-wheel drive, torque vectoring. What else can we expect? In exterior, interior and a driving experience. Join us here. Tom is in front of the camera, Joan is behind. Everything you need to know in Full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go. In the front, the Tiguan facelift introduces a stronger front hood. You can see it right here. It's more upright. And also, the front grille leads over to the headlamps. So, a nicer integration. And then here, the R, 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 R. <laughs> the R model also gets a stronger spoiler, for example, in the lower part. Bigger air intakes right here. Really massive. Contrasting black spoiler here in the high gloss black and headlamps usually now come from led as standard optional the so-called iq light these are then the matrix led the ones you can see right here so what do you think here i think pretty strong impression for the r the length is at four meters 51 or 178 inches and so the vw tiguan is still a compact suv well, or a mid-size SUV, depending on the definition. The thing is that the exterior dimensions are still somewhat in the way that you can find a parking spot or so. However, it already has a lot of space on the inside. We'll check it out in the interior view. Here, the R model now, special features. Get an R batching right here, then contrasting mirror caps in this matte silver finish. Really beautiful. 20-inch wheels would be already standard for the R model. And these are even bigger, 21-inch wheels. Never thought that we have 21-inch wheels for a Volkswagen Tiguan. And really impressive styling. Still, there's the crossover cladding. It's also the same for the T-Roc R, for example. They still want to keep that SUV look. Then a normal upright building style. Interesting here with the different dropping lines here, but this is the case for the whole Tiguan family. Again, massive wheels here, and you see the blue brake calipers contrasting also, and of course, bigger brakes here for this Tiguan R version. Suspension, a normal Tiguan would start with a normal suspension, optional DCC, dynamic chassis control, that's the adaptive suspension. The Tiguan R gets the DCC as standard, and then also for the sportier setup, it sits 10 millimeters lower. Yeah. What do you think here for the side profile? Also pretty massive, isn't it? In the rear, the Tiguan facelift introduces these new tail lamps here that look a little bit more modern. And the special sporty R model, the better right here, also with this new R logo. You know, a while ago they changed the logo for the whole R family. And in the lower part, then you have the shiny gloss contrast once again in this diffuser style here in the lower uh, lower end and you also get a sports exhaust from standard but these here are the optional akrapovich exhaust for even more sound punch under the hood we have a two liter tsi turbo petrol engine four cylinder 320 horsepower all-wheel drive front plus rear on demand concept and the acceleration figure to one kilometers or 62 miles now is just less than five seconds or so little less than five seconds so that's of course pretty powerful for this segment and there's also a new torque vectoring available for the rear axle so not only distribution front to rear but also between the wheels in the rear so for example the let's say we're going in the left corner then the right outer wheel can receive more torque than the other side so you're getting basically pushed out of the corner 
and make the driving experience even a little sportier. This is the car key. It's the classic older one, but it does the job, so I don't need an upgrade there. Lapis blue is the color, by the way, and then put your hand on the outside to close it. Inside, for open it for the keyless entry and door closing sound. Very solid, like that. Inside of the doors with bright Alcantara. That's beautiful, nice. Then you got these sporty inserts and also soft touch material here. It's not the softest one, but it's still soft touch somewhat. Door pockets also work for bigger bolts, that's cool. Then you have an R entry badge. You also have aluminum pedals, soft touch dashboard, and then new steering wheel here in general for the Tiguan. And the R gets a special one with blue inserts, blue contrast stitches, R logo, flat bottom, and also this R button here at the steering wheel that directly, oh, now it's gone, that directly activates the R, or this racing mode, so, so to speak. And you can see here, these buttons are illuminated, now not anymore, so you can see the difference. And they're capacitive. Hmm, yeah, that's the thing, not that intuitive to use. It looks cooler, but to use, hmm, doubtful. Then, seating materials, updates for the facelift and take one for all models, but here the R gets a special sport seat with integrated head restraint, microfiber, really feels very nice, it looks amazing. Then on the outside, there's leatherettes, so this seat is completely animal-free. So Volkswagen more and more on the way to more sustainable cars. Finally, I think the di diesel crisis also helped them to change their minds. Um, yeah, they were, of course, forced to, but now they really try to follow it even more. So then I get inside, and the cool thing about the Tiguan is it's not such a big SUV on the exterior, but you already have a very roomish feeling on the interior, and these R sport seats are really amazing they offer you some side support in the lower area and in the upper area but still we with one with 86 or six with one have enough space to move in it the fabric will stay cool in summer and warm in winter the microfiber is also cozy and more premium feeling in the top part so this seat indeed fulfills both purposes comfort and sportiness and here a lot of headroom is still left you can also go for a panoramic roof that would reduce the headroom a little bit but still it would be really substantial no problem as for that you have special shifting pedals here also and then the steering wheel can be moved up and down and in and out like this so you find a very good seating position here to me at this size here the tiguan is the most comfortable suv i think at this size more comfortable would only be when you go for bigger suvs and once again i think this sport seat i mean the base seats are also good but the sport seat here maybe even improves the comfort at least as for me. So, what you can say here in the front from seating is A+. Plus. Interior overview, soft touch dashboard here. There's an <laughs> additional cubby hole here in the top part. That's quite funny. You, know, you see basic Tiguan, not too fancy, but here the R model then gets this special new steering wheel with the shifting pedals and the R logo we've shown to you. From this perspective, very interesting also with the perforation here. But then again, this capacitive buttons here, heated steering wheel in three levels, that's a cool function, but there is some kind of a feedback, yes. You also hear that, but the feedback is not really that distinctive and you can press or slide. So in two ways you can use this switch to view here for the digital instruments zoom or deal to that and also do that and on the left side then with the r mode button that sets everything on the race yeah dcc and also the throttle input and so on and then the adaptive cruise control here on the left side and here for example you slide or press and while driving using it it's really a hassle to do that so that's visually a step forward but from the control input a step backward Analog screens would be sent for a normal Tiguan. Here the R automatically gets the 10-inch digital instruments. On the right side, you would, in a base Tiguan, have 6.5. Then 8-inch would be standard for the Tiguan R already. And for mid-trim or 
you know, like midroom Tiguans. And this one here is the option 9.2 without any button. You have dash chair function, which sometimes likes to function, sometimes not. And the 8-inch one, I recommend the base one because here then you still have the manual volume knob and also this zoom knob for the GPS. Here this is completely button less than and um, since the recent phase, uh, you know, like um, the recent um, upgrade here for the maps, I think it has become slower, maybe because everything has become more complicated a little bit. So it used to be very fast in Tiguan. Now I think it could be more responsive. Yeah, more functions, maybe take more, you know, toll on the CPU. The base menu is actually quite, you know, with a good overview and soon more details to that, also with the CarPlay and so on. Then in the lower part, we have the climate unit and this is now capacitive as well. It looks cooler. Once again, the normal knobs would be easier to control, but for a capacitive solution, either with sliding or with pressing, for a capacitive solution, this AC unit is fairly easy to use. And you can also see the big numbers here, what you are actually doing lower part now two usb-c um, chargers here and also inductive charging pad underneath after all of that extra and the android auto apple carplay connection goes both via cable carplay also works wirelessly maybe the android auto is soon too I'm not sure I haven't tested yet then here the shifting lever is pretty thick so um why not? You put it in D or the in S mode. S would be the sport shifting mode. But when you put it in the race mode, you're automatically in it as well. Then you have driving mode selectors. Usually you would use the R mode, but if you get into off-road situations, you can also here activate the off-road driving profile. This also changes how the ESC is reacting and so on. Then this lower part, you can slide it open and then you have cup holders on demand, so to speak. Also then adaptive. Why not? And this armrest, well attached, leather red cover, looks fancy, and underneath a smaller cubby hole. Reminding us of the VW Caddy, by the way, there are these middle storages, and they're actually quite large. Right here in the ceiling, also a second one right here. You can, <laughs> that's a slow dampening, quite nice. For example, to access it as from the, you know, from the rear compartment. One more close up at the infotainment here now, the gesture function. I also call it the slapping function. Sometimes works here. And uh, you have vehicle controls right here, for example. And um, off-road view is, you know, interesting here with some degree informa information. Um, you can also change what you want to see in a digital cockpit on the left side. Have a classic view or uh, different views you can adjust up there or what you want to have on the right or the left side. And then the Apple CarPlay integration, I have it right here. This is actually fairly good. And the basic sound system, which is installed right here. There's also an option available, but the basic sound system, um, yeah, pretty basic indeed. Not that convincing, but there's a new one available, which is optional. And I would recommend you to go for this one then. But the integration here works quite well with the CarPlay and probably most of the time you should also use this one then rather than the infotainment system, which used to be actually quite good, but I think also meanwhile a little bit of a step backward, but you get most functions here. But I can just recommend you just to stick with the base infotainment system. It probably will make you even happier, even if this one looks fancier from the integration. Digital instruments, you can change what you want to see in the middle, for example, also part of the map, or you can make it all the way full screen. That's, of course, the biggest advantage of these digital instruments. Pretty nice. And then you can also zoom in and out in the map with sliding on these new capacitive buttons. But uh, once again, yeah, it's really harder to control them now. Basically, they give you a good overview, although I found the very first version of the digital instruments we had in Etigo and also in the Passat B8 even a little bit better. These remind us now a little bit more of the VW Polo. The head-up display is not projected into the windscreen, but um, on this separate layer. And the cool thing is there's like a knob next, next left to the steering wheel where you can adjust the height pretty easily. So that's a straightforward, um, you know, solution. So it's not the best one, but still nice to have. But I think the take one at that price should actually have a real one projected into windscreen. And you can also, um, you know, shut it off anytime you like. Now let's check out the rear compartment right here. Also with a nice Alcantara insert here. Just the top part here is then hard pack. Yeah, at that price for the R, maybe I would have expected other things, but then again, they would need to change it also probably for other models. 
Mm, yeah, okay, about that. But the rear seating here is also as nice as in the front. See a very upright, also with a nice blue fabric and the microfiber inserts, leatherette on the outside. And you can see it's a very clean and clear design also for the rear. And you already see that we have a lot of space. The middle console now features USB-C charging next to 12 volt charging. And you can also get heated rear seats on the outside each, each end. You see it is more like a little bit single seating setup. Um, it also feels a little bit sporty when sitting here in the rear, so that's cool. And there's plenty of leg room left. Again, the package of this vehicle is really good because we have only the transverse engine mount in the front, this MQB platform, so plenty of leg room left and also plenty of headroom left. And you can also adjust here the back part of the seat, make it more upright if you want to sit like this or put it more on the back, so that's no problem. So you find a very comfortable seating position here. Maybe usually I would put it a little bit more upright like this, and also the Tiguan, that's um, different to the Seat Ateca, for example. In the Ateca, you cannot move the rear bench here in the Tiguan, you can to make either more legroom or a little bit more space in the truck. So also top rating here for the rear. There's of course a middle tunnel here for the all-wheel drive, but in the middle part, you can actually see it. It's of course not as comfortable as on the outside part, but just, you know, space-wise, you can also easily use this car with three tall adults. Why would you go for such a performance SUV to have a practical sports car? You know, with electric hatch and also with a lot of room right here. You can also put a replacement tire there if you like and just put a cabin trolley inside. You can see you have a lot of space indeed and very practical use. You can also fold the seats from here, so very practical levers, but I first give you the normal length here as for the measures, and this is the normal trunk length here, 86 centimeters, and then when we fold it, I can show you the full length, yeah, full length, <laughs> one meters in the width, a little bit more even, so that's also good. You have a rear power socket also in the rear, that's also a good feature for some, you know, different leisure activities and so on. And then the total length here to the front seat is about 1 meters 70. Last but not least, we need the height here below the cover. And this is then yeah, about 45 centimeters. And the total height about 80 centimeters. Welcome to Thomas' Driving Lounge with the new Tiguan R. And even if you are in a normal driving mode here around the bar, you already feel that this car is sportier than the base Tiguan. But when you really keep it you know, steady and slow, you still have the comfort of a base Tiguan. That's no problem. Of course, with the 21-inch wheels, you lose some comfort. But still, since we have the DC seat and the chassis control, it's somewhat okay. Let's put it to the R mode, this race mode. I have activated here on the steering wheel and also then you know we get the feedback in the infotainment screen and when I accelerate out let's see well, and that's all we're well, almost 80 kilometers an hour you see that works very well and this torque vectoring also gives me an, a better push out of the corner that's really cool so the outside wheel gets a little bit more torque than the inside wheel and that yeah you know helps to turn it around basically here also then left and right really good precise steering i like that it's a progressive steering you don't have to steer that much it's but also comfortable for the normal everyday use and again there's no dead zone area really precise from the steering that's probably the one thing that i like yeah, almost best together then with this upright seating position which is Good for the overview but still the sport seats then give you the sporty side of it so i really like this mix this car is presenting so on the one hand you have the sportiness with the drivetrain and the sport seats and suspension is stiffer definitely but on the other hand still a good comfort here from this you know upright tiguan driving and at any time you can hit the throttle and you got the power or use the shifting wheel shift back yourself up and you have also then the you know, DSG manual controlled so to speak and when you shift back yourself you sometimes also have the, you know have these DSG farts and like this blubbering from the Akrapovich exhaust in here in this case 
hold the right pedal to go to the auto shifting mode once again and when you are in the R driving mode you're also in this S shifting mode that means that the gears are turned up higher so shifting up later and shifting down earlier it's of course a little bit more driving fun also higher fuel consumption that's clear but this is also here then about the performance of course and slalom wise for example you couldn't guess it's an SUV because it really has great handling more has a handling of a compact hatch or so then here yeah, stop sign and that's yeah in this case also pretty nice because that we could stop and see the one there accelerate out wow really cool I mean how does this car push me out of the corners I really love that torque split in the rear it feels so good and I mean I heard read about the technology and so on and it's really better than I would have ima imagined you know so yeah that is really so cool now we have some nice corners ahead right here it's almost feels like, feels like a race car I'm really really impressed what Volkswagen R has done here also here one kilometer an hour still very good control also in, in slalom like situations and also the brakes are doing a good job very well to control exactly know what I'm doing and yeah can just stress again it's really cool by the way lane assist when you hit the left index finger column indicator here and then press once okay then lane assist off because here I don't want anything to interfere with me so I put the lane assist off then I can have, have even more pure driving fun and definitely the Tigon R is delivering 21 inch wheels yes you do feel them you know when the road is even they are great for sporty driving definitely but when there's like uneven parts in the road then you feel the you know more connection to the road which is on the one hand desired for the sports model yes oh that was some bird poo sorry about that um, on the other hand the thing is yeah I mean you would have a little bit more comfort definitely with the 20 inch wheels so I would advise you to stick with the 20 inch wheels they also look massive on this car just visually that's actually totally fine the 21 inch reduce the comfort in a little bit and for you know that addition um, to be a little bit better than for the visual part I wouldn't really do that the cruise control by the way if you go back to the normal mode cruise control here set on the steering wheel, but again it's not that intuitive to use as we would have the real buttons by the way here it's a little bit different than with the ID3 for example where we also see this capacitive steering wheel resume and set like this resume one two one kilometer steps set one kilometer steps back and then when you had plus and minus then you go 10 kilometer steps so that's also the logic of the normal button steering wheel uh, this logic was different than in the like in the, in the Golf and in the ID3 we've seen. So not sure why they did the um, the differentiation right there as for this respect. I really find it cool that we have the R mode direct steering wheel, so I don't have to like um, you know do anything around here in the lower part and then only get to this racy mode. So really cool. I think best is really this mix between sportiness and comfort. I could very well imagine driving this as a just primary car also for the family and still have something to be able to play around with. And let's now hit ESC Sport together with the R mode and let me show you the launch control just for you. Let's go. That was already 100. Nice. So I had to reduce the speed immediately now here. I also cleaned up the bird poo for you <laughs> that was on the windscreen before. I'm not sure if you really saw that on camera, but just want to want you to have the clearest view from the exterior. So yeah, that also belongs <laughs> to our <laughs> protection quality. So that was a very impressive acceleration, of course, from this all-wheel drive, even distribution, so you don't leave rubber on the ground. Um, can I check the time curve? How much it was it? Was it really a little bit less like than five seconds? Did that work? So yeah, but it felt very, very good. So I'm really happy with the performance of this vehicle and the handling is just superb. So once again, I think you could really forget that you're driving an SUV with that. 
As for the DCC, by the way, when we deactivate the race mode or like sport mode would be also sporty, but not that sporty as race. In comfort again, the DCC is definitely softer and this will be more relaxing than, for example, for longer rides when you want to go on holiday or so. And this is really a big difference, you know, when you are in this, is, you know, in this, in this drive mode selection. And the good thing is that you can also very well access it here with the R mode and then just pick it here in the infotainment system. So even if you want to switch that around. And comfort mode, yeah, I think that's just really good spend, good variety between the comfort and the sporting mode. Here, for example, here, when I'm in the sporting mode, uh, in the, in, sorry, in the comfort mode, there even the car doesn't like really shake up. But when we're in the race mode, and again, suspension is a little bit stiffer and you have just more contact to the road and you also immediately feel that we are a gear backward and so on. So it's good that they offer this, you know, flexibility they have there. So definitely one of the most fun Tiguan rides we had. Yeah, there was this episode where we had the Tiguan in the snow and we're drifting it around the normal version. That's of course, yeah, probably even more fun, but driving it here on the road, um, it's of course bigger than the T-Rock R. And the T-Rock R was also really fun in driving, but this one here, the Tiguan feels more refined. It's a segment above that and you feel it also, you know, like quality of materials and some finishing and so on and so on. So um, Tiguan is indeed also one of my favorite compact slash mid-size SUVs. And the Tiguan R, of course, makes this ride then here just even more emotional. So that's perfect, right? <laughs> Red traffic light, we're arriving. So that's probably, oh, these guys are live on tape. Let's clear that tra traffic light. Let's put auto green. That's the, you know, auto fuel, automatic green traffic light, right? <laughs> Hmm, we should think about that. I'll get back to you. Uh, no. They didn't know it. It's just they didn't know it. <laughs> but of course, the red traffic light is always, once again, a chance to, yeah, maybe not necessarily test the launch control. I think that's a little bit, a little bit over the top, using the launch control at the traffic light. I think so, right? So maybe like just, I can put in the R mode preloads a little bit and then you know normally use like a nice acceleration when the traffic light jumps to green again but not launch control right we just uh, tested the launch control i think that's fine for now so i still want to show you some um, more of this uh, torque vectoring especially in the corners because that's also a very interesting aspect talked about it earlier but even more so to test it you know, when accelerating straight, of course, you don't feel so much from it. It's more really when you are in the corners. And that is really then newly introduced then here with this Tiguan R. Of course, also the other models will profit from that. What if we're already at speed, 50 kilometers to 100, let's go. Here we go, that's it. Also, this is very well done. And also here at higher speeds, noise insulation is very good. It's really silent. I mean, it's an upright SUV and still it's very, very silent and refined in here. So you can not only enjoy a sporty driving, but also a comfortable driving as for the noise insulation. That is also counting then for all the other Tiguan models. Next roundabout right here. Pretty cool. Out. Yeah, that's so nice. So really smooth out of all these corners. Now we're getting to the motorway. Yes, we are in the race mode. Right here and out of the corner once again. Yeah, I really feel that the rear is pushing around a little bit more than it used to be from all-wheel drive systems that are front-wheel biased. So indeed, this torque vectoring system is reducing a front-wheel bias effect here from this Haldex all-wheel drive. And that's of course, I mean, that's what we have all been wishing for, for these models. And definitely also the new Golf R will profit from that. So now getting on the motorway, we can drive a little bit faster here. This is not an unlimited speed part, but still feeling very safe here. It's not too big, this car. So also in narrow situations, no problem. Lane change easily done, really stable. Once again, also with the race mode when DCC is set on the sportier node. Even if we go a little bit faster now, more than like, towards 80 miles an hour, 130 kilometers an hour, 
really very nice as well noise insulation, staying very calm and collected. So yeah, it's also a very good motorway vehicle. And if we compare, for example, a uh, VW Passat, which would be basically like the same segment, um, as for you know like pricing and like how premium is it? Not of course same body segment. So when I talk about segment, like as for pricing and you know comparable cars in you know cross um, different body types, the Passat is also definitely a very nice vehicle. But here I just appreciate the upright seating position and these sport seats, I can confirm the initial um, impression we had earlier in the interior part. The sport seats are just marvelous. Not only visually, they also give you, you know, good support when I was doing the sporty driving. Yet at the same time, they're so cozy and comfortable that I could very well imagine going like a very, very long road trip in these sport seats. So once again, really, really happy with these. Now about some assistance systems. First of all, blind spot monitor here flashing at the side mirror. Very good integration and a great safety feature. And when I use the turning indicator, then it also you know, really is flickering. So that's really cool. And I have activated the travel assist. That's the new updated assistance systems for longitudinal um, as well you know, as cross steering or like control of the vehicle in a semi-autonomous way. And here, for example, when I get to the side, I get steered back. So everything now centralized here. At the moment, I'm doing nothing. So car is holding speed, also keeping the distance to the car in front of us and also keeping us in the center of the lane. And this works indeed up to a speed of 210 kilometers an hour. So like 230 miles an hour. At, but yeah, I'm not sure if I would use that at these speeds. Probably when you are at these speeds, then it's yeah probably more clever to do that just on your own, right? <laughs> And of course, you might just want to do it here again, the blind spot motor, once again active. So far, happy with the travel assist. When you have the travel assist set, then the steering feels a little bit more numb than before. This somehow belongs to the system, but that's also okay. So as soon as you want to have that deactivated, you, for example, just hit the brakes and then you're back in the normal mode again. In a comfort mode in general, the steering is also a little bit more loose, a little bit softer. Whereas when you go to the race mode, then once again you're getting you know, a little bit more feedback from the steering wheel that's also good when you press it way in then you always home jump to the race mode but when you press it just like really slightly then you can also click through the driving modes and also go back to comfort or sport again but as soon as you hit it a little bit harder then you're back in race mode again i mean i can understand the thought behind it but yeah to control that really precisely while driving is once again not that easy. Well, and about the fuel economy, yeah, that's about it. I mean, it's an SUV, it has a 320 horsepower, and even if I have, you know, I have zeroed out the consumption meter now and just put it cruise control 130 on the motorway, and that's about nine liters per 100 kilometers, that's minimum consumption, so about 26 mbg US, 31 mbg UK. So, yeah, and when you, of course, floor it a little bit more out, then we get to two digit figures in liters, like more like 11 liters or more kilometers. And yeah, that would be rather than some, some, something like 20 mpg yeah, in these, these regions. But no wonder, and it has a substantial horsepower output. If you wanted a little bit more fuel saving, then you would rather go, for example, for the new hybrid model, which we will also show you on our channel. This could be you know, another very interesting alternative. Now we go off the motorway once again to have some more corners and especially you know, in Germany going on and off the motorway is always a lot of fun because we have some nice corners there and it's always astonishing here how fast we can go with this Tiguan in this corner. Again, it doesn't feel at all like an SUV and I mean seriously, this can really be a serious Porsche Macan competitor and I'm not joking about that because the driving agility and the fun is definitely there especially then with the Krabovich exhaust probably even sounds better and now to our conclusion for today with the new Tiguan facelift especially here the new Tiguan R 
Well, the facelift made the front look a little bit stronger and also in the interior there's new infotainment, so upgrades right there and on also new seats. But of course the special thing here is definitely the R version, most powerful and an even stronger look right there in the front and also at the rear. And well, this massive wheel, so visually probably the most you know, attractive and also the sportiest Tiguan ever. And I think it suits the car very well. Don't you think so as well? Interior, lovely sport seats here with the integrated head restraints and also sustainable and with free materials. So I think job well done with the seats. Also, that we have the R button directly at the steering wheel. That's helpful. Yeah, but then capacitive controls, the rest of the steering wheel and also the temperature sliders. It looks cooler, but it's less intuitive to use. And also infotainment system wise, the CPU should be a little bit more powerful. That would definitely help. Driving wise, a uh, base Tiguan already was very good in the driving. The R, of course, here, the sporty pinnacle now, especially with this torque vectoring that you can get a little bit better out of the corners. That is a lot of fun. Of course, you lose some comfort then with these big wheels and also with the stiffer setup here of the DCC. However, since it is an adaptive suspension, you still have somewhat of compromise between sportiness and comfort. A little bit better it will be with the 20-inch wheels, so I recommend you to stick with these with the optional 21-inch. Of course, there's less tire left for the dampening, but definitely overall a sporty, fun Tiguan and yeah, one of the most desirable models uh, they overall offer for the whole brand, definitely. Pricing, yeah, will be about 58,000 euros then when you take approximate German pricing. That's, of course, really tough to swallow for a Tiguan and also in general for, you know, for a VW. Only other more expensive model they offer is the Touareg, basically, at that point. Um, yeah, but for that, you get basically the whole package. Do you think it's worth it? Let's discuss it in the comments. What do you think about the new Tiguan R? Join us there and also join us for other versions of the Tiguan and also for other VW reviews. See you there. Thank you so much for tuning in today.